Welcome, everyone. Here is today's focus for Wednesday, October the 19th, 2022. It is currently 1216 p.m. Central Time. Today's focus, two kinds of righteousness, two types of righteousness. I want you this afternoon, today, I want you to understand these two types of righteousness, and I want you to understand the significant, the significance of these two kinds of righteousness in your life as a Christian. I want you to really focus on that there are two kinds of righteousness— I want you to understand them. I want you to think about them. I want you to meditate on them. I want you to have a discussion about them today. Remember, the goal of this podcast series is to give you something to focus in on that you think deeply about. So by the end of the day, you've really gained some insight. Now, we've talked about these two kinds of righteousness for a very long time, if you've listened to this podcast. But I just think it's, it, it, this really goes along with what we've been talking about in our series on law and gospel. It's, it, it really goes with so many different things. So I just thought today, for today's focus, I would get you to focus in on two kinds of righteousness. And I thought the way to get you to do this is for us to listen and review and analyze a recent episode of the podcast, Five Minutes in Church History. Now, this recent episode of Five Minutes in Church History is actually an older episode of Five Minutes in Church History, but they pulled it from their archive, and this is when they were in Germany uh, celebrating the Reformation. I think it was back in 2017 or 2018, and so they're on location at some very important sites in Germany that deal with the Protestant Reformation, and they're at a a specific location, and they're going to look at a sermon that Martin Luther preached where he mentioned these two kinds of righteousness. So, are you ready? Here we go. Let's review this. Let's think about it today. Today, today's focus, two kinds of righteousness. I want you to understand them. I want you to consider the significance they have in your Christian life. Let's listen. Welcome back to another episode of Five Minutes in Church History. We are continuing our trek through Luther's life, and once again, we are on location. We are in Wittenberg, and we are right at St. Mary's Church. This is the church where Luther preached from 1512 to 1546. And on this episode, let's look at one of his sermons in particular. It was preached at a very important time. It comes right in between the posting of the 95 Theses and the Diet of Worms. He preached this sermon on Palm Sunday on March 28, 1516, from the pulpit here in St. Mary's Church. It was then published in 1519. The title of the sermon is A Sermon on Two Kinds of Righteousness. So there you go. He preached a sermon on two kinds of righteousness, two kinds. Now, you, you you may start thinking immediately like imputed and infused, and that is very significant, and you can really focus in on that today. But he's going to use, Luther used uh, some different terminology that maybe you're not as familiar with. Instead of saying imputed, he's going to say something else. Just just listen. The first righteousness that Luther preaches on in this sermon is what he calls an alien righteousness. Now, an alien righteousness. An alien righteousness. What do you think Luther meant by an alien righteousness? I want you to really think about that today. I want you to focus in on these two kinds of righteousness, and the first being an alien righteousness. What do you think he meant? They're, they're going to explain. Luther does not mean by that that it comes to us from outer space. What he means is that it comes outside of ourselves. The Latin expression here is extra nos. It is extra. It is beyond or outside of. Nos is the Latin word for us. So an alien righteousness is a righteousness that is outside of us. It's, it's, it's something other. It's not our righteousness. It's not something we do. It's a righteousness outside of us. Now, is he going to explain what this righteousness is? How do we understand this righteousness? Let's listen. This is not a righteousness that we can produce. We are dead. We are sinners. This is not anything that we can ever in any way, shape, or form do. 
Christ had to do it for us. In fact, Luther will say that it is through faith in Christ that Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness and all that he has. Rather, he himself becomes ours. It's very reminiscent of what Luther says in one of his theses. It's thesis number 37 of the 95 theses. There he says, every true Christian, whether living or dead, has part in all the benefits of Christ. That's a wonderful expression in Latin. It is participatio. We participate, as it were, omnium bonorum Christi, that we participate in all the benefits of Christ. We have Christ himself. We have his righteousness. Now, this is very important. We have Christ's righteousness, but this is very important, and this is the, the, a key to the understanding of the Protestant Reformation, and I think this is a key to having a proper understanding of your Christian life. It is imputed. Christ's righteousness is not infused. It's not placed inside of you. It's accredited to your account. All of Christ, all of his benefits, all, every, all of his obedience is yours. It is imputed by faith. You're just declared to be righteous. It's not placed inside of you. You're not infused with it. It's an alien righteousness. It's outside of you. It's foreign to you, but it is given to you. And so you are declared to be righteous. You are seen by God as righteous because, well, he sees Christ. Luther says this is a great bargain because what we bring to the table is our sin. Christ takes our sin and he gives us his righteousness. It is imputed to us. Luther can say, this is an infinite righteousness and one that swallows up all sins in a moment. Imputed. And it swallows up all sins in a moment. The imputed righteousness of Christ covers every sin you have, will, could. It doesn't matter the sin. It is covered by the imputed alien righteousness of Christ. I want you to truly understand the significance of that. And how should that have practical ramifications on your life? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. For it is impossible that sin should exist in Christ. On the contrary, who trusts in Christ is attached to Christ, is one with Christ, and has the same righteousness as he. That is a glorious righteousness, and that is the first righteousness that Luther talks about. The second kind of righteousness is a righteousness that we do, that we produce. It is the fruit, as Luther will say, of that first righteousness. Now, it's very important for us to catch this point. Sometimes Luther now, I think we, could, we can refer to this as a, a practical righteousness. Now, this is, where, this is where Christianity becomes somewhat, uh, can we say, divided, or there's much confusion on this, because we have to be very careful. If, if the first righteousness is imputed, see, that this becomes the whole distinction between Roman Catholicism and, and Protestant Christianity or non-Catholic Christianity. If the first righteousness is alien and it's imputed, okay, then then that's we're just declared to be righteous. Now, a lot of times, and, and they're even saying that the second one is the fruit of that. Well, how can an imputed righteousness, how can that then produce a practical righteousness without it being infused? Let, let's see how they explain this. Luther is accused of what we call antinomianism. Now, that very big word simply means this, no law or against the law. Anti means no. And of course, nomianism has within it that Greek word nomos, which means law. And sometimes Luther is accused of simply preaching the gospel and never telling people that they need to live obedient lives. Well, you need to read this sermon because you will find that Luther stresses that once we have been redeemed and we have that righteousness of Christ, that then we have an obligation. The text for this sermon is Philippians chapter 2. And I would say, what well, we, we have been declared to be righteous. See, if you say we have it, I, I get a little nervous there because that almost sounds like I'm infused with it. And if I'm infused with it, well, then obviously I have to produce righteousness. So we have to understand 
How, how does the imputed righteousness, how is it connected to a practical righteousness, to a, to a righteousness that we do? What is the connection between imputed and practical righteousness? I really want you to focus in on this today. And you may say, well, I don't, I don't really know how to think about it. Well, that's okay. Think about it anyway. Wrestle with it. We haven't, so I have two pencils here, right? I have two pencils. I have a lot more, but I have two. On the left side, you can't see. This is imputed. This is the alien righteousness, right? It doesn't enter inside of me. It doesn't do anything inside of me. It's just imputed. It's accredited to my account. I am ma- I am declared righteous. Now, here's the practical righteousness. How do these two connect? How do the two connect? Is there a connection? Now, this is, this is serious theological issues that a lot of Christians never give much thought. Now, Catholicism says, no, it's not imputed, it's infused, which then obviously will lead to a practical righteousness because it's inside of me, so therefore I cooperate with it, utilizing the sacraments and everything else. But we reject that. So how do we come along as non-Catholics and say the imputed somehow produces a practical? How, how do we, how does the alien righteousness produce a practical righteousness when the alien is outside of us. It's imputed to us. Let's see what happens here. And there in Philippians chapter 2, Paul exhorts us to have the same mind as Christ. And what Paul will tell us in that text is that Christ took on the form of a servant. For Luther, that's the second kind of righteousness that we take on a righteousness that responds in love and obedience to God, and we have a righteousness that responds in love and obedience to our neighbor. And Now, this seems to indicate that what happens is when we, by faith, right? right if you think about it, repentance is a change of mind, right? So if we understand repentance is a change of mind, I change my mind. I then understand the truth of Christ and him crucified. I assent to that truth, right? I trust in that tr- uh, that that righteousness. I trust in what Christ has did. There is faith. So I've changed my mind. I've placed my faith in Christ. And now th- his righteousness is imputed to me. And because I've changed my mind and I'm trusting in it, this should lead then to a pursuit of practical righteousness, not based off a law, not based off trying to prove anything, but based off a, a genuine love, a genuine uh, uh, almost gratitude because of what has been done for me in my position. All right. Now you've got to, you've got to be very careful how you explain that. How do we love our neighbor? How can we love our neighbor? We can love our neighbor because of the righteousness of Christ that has been imputed to us. And we can love our neighbor because Christ has provided us the example. The example is that we are to be a servant. Well, that's Luther on the two types. See, that doesn't really explain anything. How can I love my neighbor? Because of an imputed righteousness? Wait, how does an imputed righteousness make me love my neighbor? It's imputed. We, we, on one hand, we talk imputed, and then we almost make it sound like we speak of an infused. So today, for your focus today, today's focus on this Wednesday, I just want you to consider these two. We'll call it imputed. I'm going to use, Luther used alien, but imputed in practical righteousness. Is there a connection? How do they connect? How do they relate? How do we understand this? And I want you to think about it. And remember that this series is not for me to do an in-depth teaching on it. It's just to lay it before you for you to meditate and think about it. And I would like you to email me your thoughts today. Newsif at yahoo.com. Newsif at yahoo.com. That is today's focus. Two kinds of righteousness. I can't wait to see what you meditate on and what you come up with.